Yes, I I'll I'll share the slides. I have them pulled up. Great. And then uh, if anybody needs to share their screen uh, and take over, I'll just hand them hand it over to them. Perfect. Thank you. Let me go ahead and pull the slides up now. And then, like I said, I'll just give it like another maybe 30 seconds, let people pull in. I think that's the other one. Let me share the right slide with you. And Marcus and Vic, I know I don't know if you guys know, but the, the, if you saw that the announcement went out about the infrastructure committee, I don't know if that's on today's agenda or not, but it might be worth sure pointing to that or talking about. Sure. Oh, thank you. Is this wait the yeah, yeah okay cool this is the one I appreciate it Vic thank you. All right cool uh you can go ahead and get started just wanted to make sure some people uh came in. Um, so yeah, thank you all for being here uh, at another Near Ecosystem Infrastructure Monthly Call, uh, where we just want to make sure we kind of touch on what's going on uh, regarding you know technical aspects and infrastructure in the Near Ecosystem, any updates, anything that uh, people should be cognizant of. Let's go ahead and get the slide, uh, the deck up. Um, we have uh, an agenda today that's going to cover quite a bit of um, topics. Uh, Vic is going to lead us with an update. Uh, Conrad's going to intro with some opening notes. Uh, we'll get some updates from a few partners around various things, uh, RPCs, oracles, inf um, you know, indexers. We try to aim to touch on these types of topics, wallets, etc. Uh, and then we will have an open discussion for anybody that's in, in the Zoom call. Uh, it's, it's a live Q&A. We want to make sure that we have our priorities straight on NF side uh, for, for 2024. Anything that maybe we're missing and fo we need to focus on, um, and then you know we want to make sure that we're focusing on top of mind um, priorities for developers, builders, etc. And then at the end we have an NPS survey. We want to also hear your feedback directly um, in written format, just so we can make sure we track kind of the sentiment uh, as time goes on, just to make sure again we're focused on the right things. So I will go ahead and actually link the Zoom call in the YouTube in case you missed it on the Luma. If you do want to get involved in section four, um, but in the meantime, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Conrad if he's here to open up. Yeah, I see Conrad isn't here. So Jim is ready with his updates. So Jim will take over until Conrad joins. Others I'll try to fill in for Conrad. So Jim, do you mind starting? Yeah, did, did, did he have a presentation or or uh, I can just, just give a, an, an, an uh, update on, on RPC and infrastructure. Um, unless Conrad had notes he wanted to share. Um, yeah, just wanted to, to update uh, current status of our RPC systems. You know, we've gone through a few protocol upgrades with corresponding RPC upgrades in the last uh, few weeks. What we're seeing right now is actually uh, re really performance systems, but we want to hear if anybody is seeing something other, other than that. Um, we're, we've actually um, increased our capacity by about 10x in the last few weeks while also optimizing performance. So we've actually seen, we're seeing current latency uh, around 800 milliseconds uh, for, for uh, 95th percentile of, of calls, which we're pretty happy about. We're seeing, um, uh, you know, a, a lot of great performance reliability. Uh, please reach out if you're seeing anything different. We're also working independently on further decentralizing our RPC systems. So right now we have a lot of Pagoda sponsored uh, systems gateway. Uh, we're working with a few partners. One is uh, Lava Networks uh, that that we're, we're using to start to decentralize. So you're going to have more information in the next few weeks about what that's going to look like. It should be a um, really easy transition for all developers. You shouldn't need to do anything, but we're going to be really vocal about how we're uh, further decentralizing and giving people more options. Um, so that's that's the latest. We're uh, in the green on our PC right now, but would love to hear uh, any feedback for uh, real world uh, performance. That's all I had to update. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Jim. Uh, so I'll take it up. I think Conrad is still busy. Uh, one thing that I want to start with uh, is uh, the announcement of the infrastructure committee. And uh, my colleague Trenton is also in the call. He can share more details on how the process works. But I can uh, share uh, a bit about the infrastructure committee that was uh, formed a couple of months ago. And now it is official. The idea of this committee is to bring all ecosystem nodes, uh, Calimero, uh, Aurora, Near, Near One, Pagoda, and a couple of other uh, ecosystem partners, uh, 
to identify the gaps in infrastructure, whether it's wallets, indexers, bridges, RPCs, uh, among others, and identify what are the requirements there, try to build up a, a RFP that will be floated with the process that Trentin has created on our DevHub uh, page on uh, BOSS. And through that process, then we identify our shortlist or ask for demonstration or build proof of concept with these partners. And then at the end of the cycle, select one of the partners and try to support it to build a more robust and more performant infrastructure at near. Uh, I can put in the link in our chat here and uh, maybe until then, uh, Trentin can share a bit more about the process, how it works. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Vic. Our uh, process is pretty straightforward right now. It's kind of a, a simple manual one. Um, we're making some improvements to it uh, as we go along. Uh, but right now, um, if you hit up our wiki, we have a, well, the, um, uh, I put the wiki in the chat there. You can see all about how to uh, get in a proposal uh, through the process. Uh, you're just going to reach out to us on Telegram. We're going to get you started and set you up um, with a folder and a template so that you have prompted for the right questions. You fill it out. Um, and then we move it through the process. So our committee, uh, most of it happens asynchronously. Our committee meets once uh, every couple of weeks to talk about important things. Um, and we're also looking at doing some real deep dive breakout sessions here in the future as well <clears throat> to uh, help drive strategy. So definitely uh, something that's super important uh, to the, the leaders and the founders of the ecosystem. And um, looking forward, excited to see more coming out of that committee. Great. Thanks, Trentin. And the link that I shared in the chat, you could also see some of the projects that we have funded the last couple of months, and some of them are already building or have already launched their proof of concept. Uh, some of them being the RPC service uh, from Fastnir, and then Jitsu, one of our uh, partners, is trying to uh, build an AI-based generative AI IDE infrastructure. We're Aurora is already funded to build a Web3 uh, wallet, which supports near names and also maps near names to Ethereum names, for example. Uh, we are also coming up with this uh, treasury or a multi-sig app that will be used for uh, the governance. And uh, we have Vlad in the call who will share a bit more about the ledger uh, integration and audit that we have been working on at the end of the call. <clears throat> Meanwhile, we are also in uh, communication with six other uh, partners where we are talking about various initiatives on, again, improving uh, RPC or decentralizing it, or even working on these DNS names, which are more uh, Web3 friendly, uh, also discussing some cross chain and bridge uh, topics, uh, while also working with the, you know, some of the relayer partners and relayer uh, services that we want to build along with some of our partners like uh, Meteor to name a few. Uh, yeah, on the thematic updates, we have uh, five par partners today, or uh, five of them. We'll start with uh, DDA for uh, Pike Speak, who will share with us uh, some of the cool things he's been building with on chain data. So I'll uh, let uh, DDA take over from here and share some cool updates from your end. Awesome. DDA, did you uh, need to share your screen? Or are you good? Uh... No, I'm good. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, guys. Very excited to be here. Thanks, Vic, for the invitation. Um, so I'm Didier, the co-founder of PikeSpeak. I just wanted to update you guys on two things. Uh, the first thing is what has been done uh, recently and what is coming. So what has been done, the first thing, and I guess that echoed um, what you mentioned, Vic, about Fastnir, is that we've been, we integrated Fastnir for, um, to display large uh, token balances. And refinance is a good example, right? Because you have hundreds of tokens and we are like extremely happy uh, about the integration. It's really uh, super fast. So I would recommend to any project that you know, has the same needs basically to use uh, Fastnir um, to display large uh, token balances. That's, that's extremely fast. Uh, the second thing is that we also simplified our takes viewer, so which um, so we have now three levels uh, when you want to check a transaction. A transaction, uh, the first one is the overview, which is something very easy to digest uh, for the user, right? So you want to see if the transaction, uh, you know, succeeded or failed, 
And basically the main information, is it a transfer? What's the amount? What's the, what's the token? And that's it. And then we have a detailed uh, view where you can you know, see the different receipts, for example, uh, for this transaction. And we have something more developers oriented with a tree of you know, the breakdown of the, of, of the transaction. Uh, so the cool thing about that is we are in talk with uh, different projects to have you know, bike speak um, as a reference for those uh, uh, transaction redirections, right? Um, so we've been working with HUTs and they integrated us on, on, on a few stuff with uh, their U1 project. Um, we are also now on the DeFi side displaying uh, borrow cash rewards in the DeFi portfolio, which allows you know, any DGNs to basically have their uh, borrow cash rewards displayed in a nice way when they check uh, their uh, portfolio. Um, and the last thing that you probably saw, guys, is um, on our home page, we have now uh, the top 100 account creators, which gives an appetite of, you know, what are for the near ecosystem, those different activa activation uh, channels, right? Is it centralized exchanges? Is it uh, caching? Uh, and you basically see what's trending uh, for the last, uh, what has been trending for the last hour. So that's about what has been done. Uh, now, what is coming? Uh, we've been working on a new infrastructure and backend setup. And this has been quite, um, that has lasted quite um, a bit for us, like uh, the, the, the last three weeks. But we are uh, completing this, mig this migration to, to our new backend setup. And we will have uh, back our contract analysis where basically for any smart contract, you can check, you know, stats such as user retention, uh, what's, you know, what, what have been the, the, the most active users over the last seven days, over the last months, uh, for example, um, which has been uh, not live for the last three weeks. So quite frustrating for us, but it's uh, coming back again uh, and it should be back again this week. And the last thing that we are the most excited about is our uh, DeFi Alpha uh, dashboard, which should deliver a semi-strong form of market efficiency. So what does that mean? That means that we will have easily um, like accessible data and easily readable data for what's happening on DeFi right now, but not only for live transactions, uh, also historical transactions. So you want to see the live flow of you know, uh, swap, on, swap on refinance, uh, liquidity provision events, uh, borrow cash events, then basically you have access to that. But you can also check any DeFi historical transaction um, and, and in a very easy uh, way to read, like a bird eye-like experience, almost a deck screener experience, but not, not only for a trading pair, for basically almost uh, any DeFi event on here. So yeah, that's everything for us uh, at the moment. Yeah, very interesting updates, Didier. Thank you so much. I, I had a quick question on that one. Uh, does that eliminate the need for using deck screener or bird's eye in that case? Um, I, I, well, I, I guess that um, you could use, uh, you know, uh, Pike Speak as a, as a signal to, you know, trade with this view. So I guess that we are covering uh, most features um, that Dex Screener is providing at the moment or, or bird eye, but people are really used you know, with Dex Screener. They have also trading view charts uh, if they are doing any technical analysis, uh, which we don't. So I wouldn't say we will eliminate the need uh, for Dex Screener, uh, but we will cover like all the trading pairs, all the DeFi events in one um, in, in, in one page. So that will be something Dex Screener doesn't have, right, at the moment, because you only have access to trading data for a specific trading pair. Right, right. Yeah, very good information. Yeah, and also what I saw was a bubble map-like uh, chart, right, which you don't get on Dex Screener, but you get them at bubble map, which is available on PySpeak, showing uh, yeah. that... Yeah, cor yes, correct. That will be also something else. Yes, we provide. 
Um, we are also building a main coin race chart um, to be more into the DGN spirit um, and to have you know DGNs engaging with uh, the near ecosystem, but also checking what other uh, DGNs are doing, right? And 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 leveraging that market information to either improve their whatever you know strategies, uh, but at least we will have for the first time one place with you know, easy readable data uh, for any uh, things happening on, 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 on the near ecosystem. Great, very exciting. Thank you, Didier. Uh, we'll move on and uh, then go to Pit. And I think we have Mark yeah, on the call who can give us some updates on Pit. Jim, Jim, guys, uh, just putting my camera, I'm calling from Paris for currently blockchain week. So I'll start by this. If any of you is around, hit me up in DMs. I'll be all around. Um, no, and pip wise, so just for everyone to know, we deployed, let's say, the pip oracle on your mainnet at the end of last year. Um, exact date, I'll forget, but Neocon was testnet and a month after was mainnet. Um, and thanks to the amazing team at Burrow, um, we had, let's say, two months of back and forth around usage. So now Burrow is actually starting using Pith on mainnet. So if you use Burrow, it use Pith price feeds. But for you, it means that Burrow is starting doing price updates uh, for the assets they support on Nia. As a reminder, Pith is an on-demand oracle. So you shouldn't expect regular or proactive price updates coming to you, but you can trigger and do those updates by yourself and then use them. So with Burrow already live today, it means that actually you can um, already start using uh, the price update made by Burrow, but for safety reason, you should integrate so that if for some reason Burrow stops updating, you can uh, have a bot that take over on your end. Um, and where Burrow was shining on our end is that um, they created this uh, bot code that based on parameters you, you want, on, for the price feeds you want, can proactively do price updates for you. And so your smart contract on there can just sit on its end and read the value in the smart contract. So um, while the big announcement was, let's say two, three months back, um, we actually now at full steam, so that's super exciting, um, so you building DeFi, you need price feed. You have about 500 price feeds available to you. I would imagine that Burrow is currently updating 10 of them, but technically if you want perp, synthetics, whatnot, if you want, if you need Apple stock price on here, you can get it. So, um, if you're building DeFi in that question, be sure to reach out. Uh, later this week, we're going to update also our, our whole docs, uh, our whole near docs. Uh, on the PIS website so that we also expose uh, the borrow code, which is amazingly well made. Um, another thing, and I don't want to give timeline and I won't take much more time from you guys, but another protocol that you might see arriving later this year for near is, and we're going to have to pick our battle in between two, either on-chain randomness. So not, I mean, End of the day, looks like Chainlink VRF, but once again, it's designed the exact opposite way because uh, we want it to be fast and cheaper. Um, so if you're doing gaming, casino, whatnot, uh, or need for whatever reason, on-chain randomness, it's on the to-do list to ship this later this year for NIR. And the second thing that's also likely coming to NIR and will interest Burrow, but can interest any other DeFi app, is we're also working on what we could call a liquidation protocol. So that if you're a DeFi app that needs to liquidate position, you can actually broadcast these liquidations to uh, searchers, let's say. Uh, usually those searcher are these publishers, but you can imagine Wintermute, uh, Salini, whatnot, trading on chain. And the whole idea of this product is to, uh, it's kind of like a Dutch auction for liquidation. And having this Dutch auction meaning you will have to pay less to liquidate people. So bunch of savings for your apps. Uh, but this again from Q3 for near. So on-chain randomness and liquidation specific protocol from Q3, from Q3 for near. And today 
are working and already used Oracle for 500 price feeds. Great, Mark. And I don't have much else. Yeah, yeah, really good updates, Mark. Uh, do you do you want to also share something uh, that we discussed during the Twitter Spaces about uh, some cross chain data on Pith? I think that's very interesting, right? Given the fact that Near is also focusing a lot on multi chain and chain attraction. Yes, definitely. So um, another so also for everyone. So yeah, we had an amazing space with Near and Burrow last week, and. One thing for you to remember is uh, Pith is already on like 60 blockchains. Uh, we have about 200 apps using us or across. And with this new positioning, let's say of Neo, with this new vertical, um, we might be able to, and actually we're going to try this because uh, it's great for us, great for Nia, is to funnel existing user, whether it's, oh, switch to Nia DA or what if, go native to, to near. So one thing we're going to uh, try with this new, let's say, vertical for near is, yeah, just just get more more apps there overall. And same on the other side. So, um, but like, as we support borrow, we're going to need to support no, more near related token with price feeds. Um, so if you want a price feed, also shoot me DMs. And with our design, whenever we support let's say a near or any price feed, it's automatically available on all the blockchains we support. So let's say we have a near price feed today and it's actually used on optimism by Synthetix for their products. So also on this side, we can help you um, like get exposure also outside of the near ecosystem with our existing uh, roster of user. Uh, but was it this specific point, Vikas, or was it another one yeah, yeah, indeed, this one, and then that the price feeds could also be used across multiple chains for farming different airdrops, right? Because then you can actually have a, a wrapper on top of all the price data that we get from multiple chains, and you could get one uh, one view of all the different airdrops and the eligibilities that you have across chains. Okay, so we don't, but we don't support that yet, but that's actually a great idea. Yeah, we did discuss about it indeed. But that's good for now, Mark. Uh, appreciate your time. Uh, thank, thank you so much for joining from the conference. I'll share some more updates uh, uh, in the chat that we discussed and what, what's coming up on the pitch side. Uh, thank you so much. Have a nice day. That takes us to the third uh, presentation uh, that is uh, from you all. Hello, you all. Uh, and you all wants to present some improvements that we have done on the DRPC or IPRPC as we would like to call it from Lava. Over to you, Ian. Yeah, yeah. Hey, everyone. Thanks, Vic. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. All right, you should be good. Thank you. Perfect. Oh, yeah, I always have issues with Zoom. I'm, uh, I'm used to Google. <laughs> can you see the screen? Yep, we can see it perfectly. OK, nice. Yeah, so just a short recap on what we've been doing recently. Um, uh, generally, uh, what we do at Lava, we are working with the new foundation, with Pagoda and, and other partners within the ecosystem to diversify and uh, make the public RPC and RPC in general in the ecosystem more reliable. Lava in general is a Cosmos-based blockchain that creates an open market for uh, essentially any kind of blockchain data. It starts with raw PC, uh, archive data, advanced APIs, in the future also relayers, sequencer, oracles, etc. So essentially uh, any kind of Web3 data structure you can take, you can upload it to Lava and uh, create a market for it, incentivize data providers to provide it and uh, uh, essentially compete over the best quality of service. Uh, so what we uh, did with uh, uh, for near essentially we created an endpoint that aggregates all, all of the top RPC providers for near on a single endpoint um, and users pair with the top performing ones according to the performance latency uptime and sync so we deployed on February uh, we deployed the public endpoint uh, we also deployed a custom endpoint on our uh, gateway app 
Uh, we launched uh, Neo Protocol on Magma, which is our gamified experience for uh, Web3 users to engage with Lava prior to Minute, which is a really cool initiative. has been bringing a lot of new growth for both Lava and uh, Neo Protocol. Um, collaborating with wallets such as uh, Sender, upcoming also collaboration with uh, Mintbase and uh, Meteor Wallet, uh, Here Wallet, etc. Um, yeah, some of our users are on Mintbase, Refinance, uh, Mineer Wallet, Sender, Shardog, etc. Uh, so, and and this kind of group is is also always growing. Uh, we're always discussing uh, new opportunities with uh, builders and teams in the ecosystem. So. Um, I expect uh, many new uh, services to start uh, working with Lava very soon. Uh, so this was February. In the last month, uh, we onboarded um, two RPC partners, which are essentially providers who we have very good experience uh, with uh, from past initiatives. So these are kind of partners that we work with to ensure that uh, the endpoint is super reliable and robust. Uh, we have implemented and has enhanced caching, and we're currently standing on around 60 to 70 percent um, cached responses, which is really high uh, and has really improved the quality of service on the endpoint. And we're also uh, working actually together with Refinance to improve the uh, latency in the uh, Asia region, APAC region. Yeah, so some stats you can see here, um, the uh, data for mainnet and testnet. We have around 70 active providers. Uh, across the last month, we provided, we serviced almost 5 billion requests. Uh, and compute units is, is a breakdown of RPC relay, uh, relays because each RPC relay has a bit of a different uh, compute uh, cost. So this is kind of a metric that we use to break down exactly uh, what was the cost uh, for providers to sell this, uh, this data. And you can see that we're seeing uh, around 400 million uh, daily relays on average, uh, which is has been like uh, really, really amazing growth uh, over the last uh, two months. Uh, some of the providers we uh, that are on the endpoint, uh, Stakesito, Lavender 5, Block Hunters, Decentrio. I'm not sure everybody is as familiar as me with uh, node providers, but um, uh, from people who are you know familiar with with the field and the teams, these are uh, top top tier providers, very professional teams that have a um, well known name uh, between uh, node runners. Some more stats from the last week. You can see that the geolocation spread. Uh, is kind of between the US and, and Asia. So this is why we're kind of making the, the uh, we are working on making the latency uh, better in, in the Asia region. Uh, some more about Megma points. Um, so just like briefly, Lava is generally a bit of a technical project in our testnet until now. We've had mostly technical per participants, whether that's developers uh, or node runners. Um, and now, essentially, any user, any Web3 user that has a wallet and, and, and knows his way on chain can take a customized endpoint from um, our points uh, platform, put it in his new wallet, and then every time he's active on chain, he can gain points uh, for making RPC queries through Lava. And if you didn't know, it's not only for transactions, even when you open your wallet, you make a lot of RPC calls to query your balance, to query gas costs. Um, so even if you're not making transactions and you're just using uh, Lava RPC in the background, you can earn Magma points, um, which in the future might make you eligible for any kind of reward system um, decided by Lava Foundation. So this is a kind of cool way that we're connecting the Lava and the uh, near community, making, making it very easy to, for near people to also uh, engage with Lava. We're still in the process of implementing uh, near Connect, the, the wallet selector, but it's gonna be implemented very soon, hopefully. Uh, yeah, some testimonials. Uh, so a few teams that we've been working with like uh, Mintbase and Shardog um, are very happy and, and we're happy. So uh, definitely wanna share that. And moving forward, 
Um, there are a few things that we're focusing on. First of all, making sure that the latency and the service is uh, top notch across all geolocations, um, including archive support. So we're onboarding more top providers, more providers in Asia, more archive providers, et cetera, as well as cost reduction and infra boost uh, to our own internal infra. And then we have uh, new features like an updated dashboard, um, which uh, should make it very easy to uh, for anyone to see whether the endpoint is live. Uh, if there's downtime, they will be very uh, they'll be able to very easily see and check if it's on their end or if it's lava um, or anything like that. And also see more stats about the health of the endpoint, like uh, what uh, you know. How much traffic is it serving? How many providers? What's uh, the geolocation spread, etc. Um, so that's something that we uh, really want to get uh, out soon. As I said, archive support. We're also working on uh, WebSocket subscriptions, caching, uh, DDoS protection, and advanced APIs. Uh, so yeah, a lot of work, and and we're happy to to keep updating as we move forward and have new features and uh, improve the service. And yeah, let me know if you, I know it was a, a bit overloaded, but let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer. Uh, thanks, you all. I see a question from Didier. Do you want to ask the question yourself, Didier? Yeah, thank you, Vic. No, I, I was just wondering if you guys provide a um, RPC endpoint for historical data and if there is any state size limits um, for, for those data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are currently working on uh, implementing archive support. Essentially, how Lava works is you have the protocol, and then you have a network of providers that supports it. So it's kind of a two two phase process. We added it to the protocol, um, but now we're doing the work of onboarding uh, data providers that have near archive data. So once we have enough providers we can ensure that the data is actually robust and the performance is going to be high and then we can uh, release it. So this is kind of the process that we're in. I'm assuming it's gonna take a couple more weeks uh, and we'll make an announcement, obviously. Great, thank you. Awesome, thanks so much, Yael. Uh, then we move on to our next slide and we have Luke, I assume, yeah. Luke from Nearblocks, who is going to share some of the updates and progress they have made on Nearblocks uh, last couple of weeks, or almost uh, a month now. Uh, over to you, Luke. Is he in the call? Uh, I'm checking now, and I don't see Luke in here. I'm not sure if he made it on today's call. Oh, he did confirm, though. We can uh, skip this section to the next, yes. and then if he if he pops back in or joins, uh, we can come back. Yeah, let's move to Vlad then. Awesome. Hi, Vlad. Hey, folks. Can you see my screen? Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yep. I had to unshare mine, but we're good. We can see your screen and hear you perfectly. Awesome. So, well, um, DevHub is not just a team where we, we are actually building communities here. So I'm 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 taking responsibility of uh, sharing more updates than just from the team that uh, we are trying to build this community. Uh, so better with me. And uh, yeah, I want to remind the uh, scope of uh, the pub for this year, um, as we like clearly identified in it falls into three buckets basically. Um, the dev tool, DevRel, and uh, DevHub as a platform, as a as a uh, portal. And uh, without further ado, uh, I want to give some updates that um, we are very close to getting Ledger app to be finally <laughs> uh, supporting all the nicest features of near protocol, uh, such as big transactions, method transactions, signing messages uh, that are not transactions, but uh, that would be uh, very helpful for um, authentication, authorization without uh, needing to uh, send transactions to the chain and then pay for them for the access keys, which is very nice to just uh, confirm that the user 
potentially possesses the key. Uh, that is very helpful feature. Uh, another paper cut removed. Uh, and we are expecting it to be live on um, Ledger Live uh, market, um, uh, Marketplace in May. Uh, currently, we are going through a formal security audit. Everything is smooth. So I'm uh, expecting it to be all good. Another update is the source kind of integration into Cargo Near and Near DKRS, uh, which will allow basically by default enable verifiable and discoverable uh, source code for the contracts, uh, which is also another huge win because these days it's uh, still uh, quite a bit of a challenge to identify what is the code uh, attributed to this. Uh, account that is deployed there, um, where, where to discover the code. I hope that will also improve um, UX and discoverability for the users and the ability to just review it yourself. And uh, yeah, all good. We're in rough mode for now, but uh, there's a huge collaboration uh, on there. Um, on the platform side and the portal side, um, I want to give an update that we basically are uh, converting our current um, Dev Hub tech into a reusable uh, solution um, for entities like infrastructure committee and other committees. Um, and for that, I will just go through really quickly what are the current features on the portal and what we can expect uh, to see uh, if some some other communities would want to run some more tech, so the announcement, so there are basically communities feature, and within it, uh, we have very a lot of flexibility with announcements, uh, discussions uh, that are fully integrated with um, near social feed. So all the posts going on through the pub are actually visible on general feed, which is great for uh, visibility, and you can even add your own custom ex extensions, which are basically just boss components. So you can build whatever you like, for example, Kanban board there. Um, and then another latest feature that was already launched recently is the new proposals flow, which we expect other communities to also uh, um, we get from us basically as a, as a solution uh, out of the box, which has, uh, um, clear and uh, structured format of the data, KYC integration. Um, that is easy, like an easy way to track the status and timeline. And also for the uh, committee's um, operations, there will be um, a, a treasury management to basically uh, simplify the ops side of things. Um, not the hub updates, but I think I want to represent our community here um, better because I don't see them on the call, but I believe they should be here. Uh, probably they didn't make it today. Uh, Fast near has had a lot of success launching um, very high performance, reliable services, uh, providing various APIs um, for developers and they are shipping daily basically. So check it out, subscribe for, for the Twitter account and uh, keep an eye on them. Another thing um, is the Tier Wallet hot uh, uh, feature being uh, finally launched with Wallet Selector. So any app, D app that has been using Wallet Selector should update their um, Wallet Selector to get this free support for millions of users uh, being able to sign, sign in to their apps using Hot Wallet. And there is, from the Pagoda side, they launched a Near Lake status board, which um, some of us developers rely a lot to know whether the indexing will be fine, is, are there any incidents there? It's very helpful and uh, yeah, if, if you if you ever wonder if it's a late issue or it's on your indexer side issue, um, check it out. Uh, yeah, this is very helpful to the, to troubleshoot things. There is also near dev newsletter, 
um, where we have already six issues and they like it's happening every single week and every single update feels like a quarter of work uh, which we can compile from the ecosystem for all the developers to be up to date and pick and choose the you can find the latest um, infra updates tooling updates events and uh, call to actions if you like what 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 are we looking for what other ecosystem uh, partners are looking for for help uh, so check it out and subscribe for to, to not miss it and the there we go is the the QR code if you want to subscribe just a reminder yeah that's uh, pretty much all from my side I see. Didier, any fun questions? Hey, Vlad. Um, yeah, I, I was just wondering because um, you have this, you know, new proposal uh, feed coming or the revamping of, you know, the existing version. And mm -hmm. I think because, you know, one of the painful points for us as an ecosystem is to, you know, attract talents. Uh, I think that in the old version, we used to have this ideation category mm -hmm. in the proposal yep. feed. And I yep. think it would be great if we have this category because as a new builder, um, you want potentially to see the gap, you know, the different gaps in the ecosystem and what can be, you know, built, experimented. So we can have, you know, prediction market is missing. Uh, there is room for another money market. Uh, yep. Reverse swap on ref hasn't been missing for, has been missing for the last two years. Um, you know, I don't know, DCA tool, and I would be out there, you have that, that's great, because I've, I've, I've collected with my team, like a list of 15 stuff, and I would be very happy to uh, input that in this proposal field. And at least as a new builder, you have access to, you know, what's missing or what can I experiment right now? Yeah, definitely. We, we thought about it, but uh, looking at the flow, how people use it before, we realized it was better to have it as a community basically here. So we created a community for hot ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, we like we are collecting some from Twitter, from Ilya, um, some old ideas. So we encourage you to also post here. The discussions are uh, totally free form. So anybody can drop their discussions here. And currently the moderators are these folks. So we will uh, help to you know select and bring more even more uh, visibility to those that are high have, have, have value high potential um so yeah it's uh, we just changed basically the, the flow a little bit um, because previously it was a mix of everything it was a bit hard to discover okay cool we'll we'll input that uh here with my team uh if you can just provide the link <laughs> yep. that would be great thank you cool. thanks here are the couple of links to the newsletter and the slides, and the last link is to the, this hot ideas community. Any other questions? Great, looks good, uh, Vlad. And I just got a confirmation from uh, Luke. I think there was some uh, miscalculation at his end with time zone uh, changes, but he is going to present some uh updates during the call this evening with uh, the tools community in the tools community group he just messaged me so i just shared the link if anybody wants to see what near blocks is uh coming up with and they'll also have a a short presentation in the ecosystem call i just heard from the, from them yeah so if if you have any anything else to discuss in general, we have some time at our hand. If not, uh, I think uh, uh, we'll uh, just continue with our work. And there's the feedback or a QR code that you could also use to share feedback on infrastructure, what needs to change uh, in general uh, feedback or anything very specific. If I may spend one more minute I want to really shout out to Near Blocks because they, uh, it, it was multi months, if not like a half a year effort to migrate to the new infrastructure. 
to support faster like backend basically data source for near blocks and they relaunched it a couple of weeks ago or maybe a week ago uh, with like it's it's super snappy these days and uh, it's yeah I, I can recommend more um, definitely start using more completely agree yeah I totally second that uh, Vlad uh, Sasha, they did announce it in the group uh, chats, larger group chats, but not as an official uh, uh, Twitter or near news yet. They're still building a lot of things in their beta version. Uh, and once that is ready, I think they'll uh, make a larger uh, announcement across the board. Yeah, Marcus, I think uh, over to you. That should be it from. Cool. Uh, just really quick, Vic. Um, no, it's a little bit on, on your pipeline. Somebody in the YouTube chat is asking uh, if there's any comments at this time or any further kind of insights or information around uh, Near Foundation's uh, $4 million venture to fortify blockchain infrastructure. Uh information in terms of which direction or which focus areas do we want to uh, look at? Yeah, so like just any any kind of like solidified information around that, you know, if there's any specific verticals or focus areas uh, within that or any just general information. Yeah, so our uh, current focus is indeed RPCs. So that's something that we are looking at. Be beyond that, we are looking at uh, a lot of uh, cross-chain communication or multi-chain solutions, whether it's bridges, uh, or uh, something to do with uh, smooth onboarding, right? Uh, a multi, uh, multi-chain multi wallet uh, like kind of solution that works with the near ecosystem with also very seamless on and off ramp uh, uh, inbuilt into it. And then there are also some other uh, very generic topics that is always in progress and for improvement, such as indexers, explorers we spoke about already, uh, and... Uh, and, and yeah, the, any developer tooling that can automate the job of developers to make a building on near easy is always more, th more than welcome. Awesome, thank you for that. Yeah, and uh, just wanna kind of end it on that note. I uh, just wanna say I really appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, we're looking to run these once a month. Again, we just wanna make sure that we continue to transparently communicate and provide updates on the state of infrastructure on near. Uh, and make sure that we're continuing to focus on the right things on near foundation side. So what I'll end it on is we do want to ensure that we're measuring this uh, sentiment. So if you can scan the QR code, uh, there is a very, very, very brief uh, NPS survey with uh, an optional um, direct feedback kind of section at the end. If there's anything you do want to write, um, we're always looking to kind of make sure we prioritize. And uh, this also should have popped up in the Luma registration as well. Um, if you didn't take it there, uh, I would have you know, we'd all appreciate if you take a moment to take it now. And until uh, the next one in um, in May, we'll see you. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Marco.